What's up everybody? It's your girl Miss Mo. Welcome back to my channel. Shout out to all of my motivators out there. Thank you so much for coming back and joining me. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you would like to become a motivator, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and make sure you hit the bell notification so you will not miss any of my uploads every time I upload a brand new video. Now, <laughs> I am doing a reaction to all of this business about the sexual harassment uh, allegations against Joe Budden from Olivia Dope. If you want to stick around and see what I have to say about all of this mess, please keep on watching. Hey, good morning or good afternoon or good evening. All right, so if you guys don't know, Joe Budden has been in the news and in the media for a little bit now. He's got some stuff going on that's already been going on for a minute with uh, two of his buddies that he had on his own podcast, Mal and Rory. So they're no longer with his podcast. I guess he fired them or whatever. So they're, you know, that's a whole big mess right there in itself. And with, as far as that goes, I think Joe Budden needs to keep his mouth uh, quiet. I think he needs to be as quiet as possible and say less as possible with all of that business. However, now we have this business with Olivia Dope. Olivia Dope is one of the three young ladies that had a or have a podcast on Joe Budden's network. So the name of the podcast is C. The thing is, so this young lady was one of the three young ladies that was on that podcast. She is now coming forth to, you know, uh, express her um, allegations of sexual harassment. So there's a video here that I want to give my take, my view, my commentary, my opinions on as far as this young lady goes and her allegations against Joe Budden. So without any further ado, let's get right into it podcast as well as the Joe Budden Network. Um, I sat with this for three months anxiously. <laughs> All right. No. Right off the gate. Right off rip. Three months? Nah. Strike one debating with myself whether I feel comfortable enough to express my reasoning for my departure. I have to read this because um, it's a lot. Um, <laughs> Whatever. After three long months of anxiously debating whether I feel comfortable enough to express my departure for re for from the See the Thing is podcast. I'm I sorry. I, I don't even want to do it again. I just want to get this over with because, like, it's it's been a lot of my spirit. Yeah. Um, I've had a so, lot of sleepless so, nights. In the so I guess there's someone else there that, you know, is recording this for her or whatever and, you know, whatever. Okay. Past couple of months, um, I have constant reminders of what has transpired. So I, I just kind of just have to... Um, Bear with me as I try to get this out. Um, Hurry up! My departure from See The Thing Is podcast, as well as the Joe Budden Network, I am here today to, still uncomfortable, but find the bravery to finally speak on a very embarrassing situation. <laughs> Not only to start my healing process, uh. but to help give encouragement to others who have similar stories of sexual harassment in the let's workplace. Get with it. Let's get On to January it already. On January 18th, 2021, Joe Budden sat in on a recording of the okay, hold on. led podcast. I was hold on. Strike two. January 18th, this happened. Let, you know, she's saying all of this whatever happened. January 18th. And I'm, where, where we at? <laughs> We, we in May, we about to be, what, 
the third we we are on the third week of may january 18th guys okay second strike let's go a part of and continuously made sexual suggestive remarks to me that made me extremely uncomfortable as well as fearful of dampening the mood if I didn't laugh along while he made those sexual remarks to me. No, 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 um, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Third strike. Herein lies one problem that I have. The problem that I have, and I have more to say, but the problem that I have right now is I don't care what is going on if you were that concerned about it and if you felt that uneasy and disrespected and, and all of that about what he said at that particular time you should have said something you should not have waited three months later i am so sorry no let's let's spin the clip those moments were not only <clears throat> Excuse me. Those moments not only live on the internet forever. Oh God! It also forced me in the decision of quitting the podcast. And um, I'm now in a place where it was traumatizing. embarrassing yeah all right it, it, I'm, okay apparently it wasn't that traumatizing to you we in the third week of may and this happened in january the 18th that's what she said you wasn't that traumatized about it let's go and i've decided that i have to actually speak up because now not only was it important for me to walk away from it, um, it also is important for me to speak up, not only to help heal myself, but also to probably help others in the future and let them know that this probably wouldn't be the best situation for you to enter into working with this person. Um, okay. So let me also say that I am not condoning that Joe Budden or anyone you know that that they have done these things that they have said these things and whatever they have done whatever way they acted whatever it is I am in no way shape or form condoning what has transpired between her and Joe Budden I am not so let's spin it I'm sorry, I need a moment. Um, within these past three months, I'm gonna just be very frank. Within these past three months, after I left, um, I've been feeling stuck. Mentally, emotionally, um, I've even had to have a conversation with my daughter on why it's important for you to speak up when somebody crosses a boundary with you. <laughs> okay, hold because on. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, you had to have a talk with your daughter. When, at, what, at what point did you have this so-called talk? Three months later as well? Let's go. There is now footage of her mother on the internet with somebody crossing a boundary with her mother. Oh, and that's God. what I'm there forever. You corrupted me. By example and let her know that that is not how somebody should speak to you. And that also is a situation where if somebody does cross that line, you have to speak up. Yeah, three months later. Um, everything that transpired in that episode happened while we were recording. 
um, some of it was edited out some of it did stay in there and I'm going to reiterate the timestamps of how everything transpired oh we have timestamps I'm gonna Great. go ahead and start from 13 minutes and 48 seconds Joe calls me out by saying, I've never reached out to him privately or personally. Um, this information is important to this entire scenario because it proves my lack of familiarity with this person. And that is what makes everything that transpired after that so uncomfortable. Um, even though I tried my best mm -mm. to laugh through it. Okay. I forget which strike we on now. Three, four, ten. I'm telling you, did, you know, no, no. I call BS and I am going to continue to call BS. Like I said, I'm throwing a disclaimer out there. In no way, shape, or form am I condoning what Joe Budden did, said, whatever, involving this young lady. I am not doing that. However, why are you coming forward three months? Whatever. This happened way back in January. Now she already done said, oh, she didn't want to dampen the mood far as them when they were recording the segment with Joe Budden. Oh, I didn't want to, no, dampen the mood. Okay, do you want better? If you didn't want to dampen the mood right then and there during the show, during the recording, as soon as they said cut, mm -mm. what you should have done was, hey, can I talk to you for a minute in private? And then if it was that concerning for her and if she was feeling some type of way and uh, whatever, at that point, she should have discussed it with him at that point and let it be known to him. Look, this, you said this, you said that. Yeah, I was laughing, but you know, I didn't want to dampen the moment because we was recording and I didn't want to put that right there on the air. However, I'm telling you right now, this is how I feel. And no, I need it to not happen again. That's it. It's BS. Let's roll. To not, like I said, dampen the mood of the room. Corny. While we were recording. Corny. Um, oh, 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 okay. So that further tells me, oh, you one of them type of people. Oh, I'm just going to go with the flow no matter how it makes me feel or whatever. Oh, I don't want nobody to call me out or say anything to me because oh, I j I'm just going to go with the flow because I don't want nobody saying nothing to me because I don't agree or I might say something that they don't like. That's what's going on here. At 1434, 14 minutes, 34 seconds. There's an edit in the recording because Joe says him and I should speak more because, quote, he's been wanting to f me since we've met. Everyone in the studio, including production staff, laugh uncomfortably while one of my co-hosts confirm that to be true. I am mortified by this revelation not only because it's revealed while we are amongst the presence of all of the production staff, but it's also being done while we are also recording audio as well as visual. You know what? Uh, oh my God. This is really, this is really getting on my last nerves. Oh, we were all laughing uncomfortably. Uh. All right. Um, that scene was cut out and it jumps to Joe repeating, we should speak more because we have the least dialogue. Um, at 19 minutes and 26 seconds, <laughs> another edit happens because Joe makes another suggestion to having sex with me. Um, this is shown, I'm sorry. Joseph makes another suggestion to have sex with me. That scene is edited out. 
and what is shown in right after that is me closing my eyes saying no and then he says never mind um at 21 minutes 30 seconds and you know uh, what Joe and you know what to hit up hold hold on hold on and you know what <laughs> She has all of these time stamps. All of these time stamps about this and that and that and this. Oh, and I was just so mortified. You weren't that mortified. I can't stress this enough. You weren't that bothered. You weren't that mortified because if you were, you would have took care of it from the beginning. I don't care what any of you guys say. This chick, no, let's spin. Uh, Joe tells me to hit a button, bitch, because I didn't hit a sound effect fast enough. At 24 minutes and 54 seconds, Joe makes a comment that I am throwing my singleness in his face and he thought we were going to be a network power couple. I and once again I'm trying to laugh all of this off. That oh. is transpiring. Why? I reply by saying, sorry, Joe, we're not. At 25 minutes and 42 seconds, I make a comment about relationships in general within the conversation. Joe retorts that my shirt that I was wearing isn't buttoned like, like I'm single. Excuse me, I have to repeat that. My shirt that I'm wearing isn't buttoned like I'm single. I pause, cover my chest with my hand and try to brush it off once again and continue the conversation. Um, at 31 minutes, 42 seconds to about 35 minutes. This change, chick with the Joe time stamps. Me feel like I'm a ho in a hostile work environment by letting my co-hosts know that I'm carrying the group because they don't dress sexy enough. Um, Cause now not only am I embarrassed for myself in, in being objectified, mm -hmm but also you're making other women that I have to work with on a regular basis mm -hmm. uncomfortable by telling them they don't dress sexy enough. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. He was wrong for that. You, Cause you're trying, you know, you're trying to pit people against each other. Yeah, she, she don't need that. Nobody needs that. Nobody needs to be put in a hostile work environment. It's been this transpired while recording in front of cameras and in front of the entire production staff. So with that, I'm sorry. Um, oh, come on, get to it. I pretty much react by looking away and looking down in discomfort several times because he has also said this in the past and it actually created a passive aggressive and competitive environment with myself and my former co-host yeah all right um where she admittedly attempted to shut down every idea i brought to the table because it wasn't well received by joe and ian his business partner um, that same former castmate often relayed group chat conversations back to Joe, which I felt, I personally felt was done because she wanted to secure her spot as his favorite because he's made it clear to the entire group that he favorites me. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. 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 So, all right, all right, all right. So I know there's more. You know, there's we're 11 minutes in. This is like 26 minutes. I don't even know if I'm going to get through all of this because this is a bunch of bull crap. But seeing that that's the case, she, you know, felt that he was pitting her and them together, you know, against each other. You know, my question is, did you talk to your, you know, uh, co-host? Did you talk to your co-workers after 
you know, group meetings or whatever group dialogue was brought to Joe, which I guess should not have been. Did you talk to them at all about what you didn't appreciate what was done? Let's get to it. Spin. Fast forward. We usually take a pause. Oh, please fast forward. For about 10 to 15 minutes uh, during recording to kind of regroup and get to the next segment. During that uh, break, I leave the studio to go inside of the green room where Joe was sitting there alone. Uh, he asked me if I was okay and I just immediately said, said yes to not even try to further any sort of conversation or uncomfortableness. See? See? No. Unacceptable. Um, he then tells me to come, he's going to come back and sit with us and just give an on-air hug to lighten the mood. I say, okay. Um, fast forward to two hours, 16 minutes and three seconds into the show. Uh, Joe turns, uh, well, Joe returns and he mentions us and just giving our, us our accolades as we've been doing good thus far. Um, this scene is edited once again because, let me rephrase that, let me go back. Oh my God. Um, he goes down the line to give everyone their accolades. He starts with Mandy. He goes to Bridget. And then once he gets to me, the scene is edited again because he says, Olivia is unique because I want to f*** Olivia and the fans love her. That scene is edited out. Those words are edited out. Hmm. But what's left there is me widening my eyes in shock and embarrassment because after he asked if I was okay, and he said he would come back to lighten the mood, I didn't think he would once again reference to wanting to have sex with me. Mm -hmm. um, at oh my two gosh. hours, 17 minutes and five seconds in the timestamp, Joe asked if he can give me an on-air hug. My co-host said yes, they insist, and I slowly get up to hug him. Still apprehensive, I give him a hug. Okay, hold on. Of a, of a dis hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm confused. Why? Why are the two co-hosts giving permission to Joe to hug you? Did I miss something here? Did I miss something? Because... You're already feeling some type of way, supposedly, about Joe because of the references that he has already made, the sexual references about wanting to sleep with you, all this kind of stuff. You know, and I don't understand. I... It's the kind of hug, no pelvis there. Um, it's unbeknownst to me until I actually watch back the episode that he was moving his hips while he was hugging me. Um, I laugh uncomfortably because I'm just... Here we go. <laughs> Here we go with the bull crap. Oh, I laugh uncomfortably. Yeah. Y'all know what I'm calling this. BS. It's nervous laughter at this point. Whatever. Um... Everyone else is like kind of chuckling and I sit back down and at two minutes 17 seconds and I'm sorry two minutes. I'm sorry. Yeah, get your time stamp I'm straight. To, like, just get all this out. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm breathing too. It's like get, get at two hours 17 minutes and 38 seconds after I sit down so and exact. on air hug, I grab the microphone and I say, this is uncomfortable. Um, that's pretty much the end of the episode that was recorded. Mm -hmm. After the recording, um, Joe was asked while he was still in the room with everyone, um, if he wanted to delete the parts he made where he made passes at me, he said he didn't care. 
as long as I'm fine with it, then the entire room pretty much looks at me and said, I just say I'm fine with it too. Um, feeling pressured. I say I'm fine. Um, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear this crap. Feeling pressured. If you had that big of a problem with what was going on, you should have spoken up then. You should have said something then. There were no cameras rolling at that point. Spin. Later, I was called back into the studio to see if I wanted to hear the unedited version again and decide if I really want to keep it in there. I listened to it again and um, in my ears, it sounded like everyone was laughing. So who am I to say this needs to be taken out? I don't have much say in the situation. <laughs> I've already been belittled in this situation. I've been sexually harassed and objectified. You know what? You know what? I want to watch the rest of this and we're, we're 15 minutes, 15, 40 seconds in and it's 26 minutes. You know, I'm boiling right now. I really am. She is full of crap. She is so full of crap. You're one of, you know, you're one of the three people that are on a podcast and you're on Joe Budden's network. He came on the podcast. You guys were recording together. And then they asked you, were you good with keeping all of that stuff in? Even Joe said, oh, you know, I'm good with it. I don't care. Ask her. Oh, feeling pressured. No. Just to break from me having these bullet points, at the end of the day, that's what sexual harassment in the workplace especially is. Mm -hmm. Belittling someone, mm -hmm. taking away their dignity in those moments of seeing them less than. So as much as we can say these are jokes, I'm an employee. I didn't have a previous rapport with this person before coming that has nothing to this podcast that ain't got nothing to do with nothing another excuse i didn't have any romantic relations with him nor did i want to at any given point in time in my life um and many would probably ask well if you know the history of joe Bud, well why would you sign on to do something like that let me tell you right now no if you're going to work and your intention is just to go in and do your job. And it ain't got nothing to do with, oh, if you knew the history. No, no, that ain't got nothing to do with it either. Because if you're wrong, you're wrong. That's it. Plain and simple. If you're wrong, you're wrong. As far as on Joe Budden's end. If you know, you're doing stuff, you're saying stuff to people, you, 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 you know, you ain't got no business saying as far as the way they're taking it, they're, t you know, you're putting them in a hostile work environment and you're, you're making sexual, you know, advances to people. No, it's unacceptable. However, this chick, no, nah, no. Nah. It should be just that. No matter who's there. If you have no dealings with this person, they even admit to having no outside conversations with you up until that point. At no time should anybody feel comfortable enough to say anything of that nature to you. Um, yeah, they shouldn't, but they do all the time. So what are you going to do about it? Nothing, apparently, until three months later. I don't wish anything that happened to me in that moment on anyone because like I said, it was extremely embarrassing. I am mortified that when people search Olivia Doe, the brand that I've spent 10 years at least building, that comes up. I am mortified 
Yeah, that's unfortunate. And after I quit, I had to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the child I gave birth to. Oh my God, big deal. I'm sorry, it's not this fast. It's New York. It's New York. An ambulance and fire truck can happen anywhere, not just New York. I am mortified that she keeps saying that I word. I have a conversation <laughs> with the child that I gave birth to because she can find it on the internet. So extra. Her friends can find it on the her teachers can find it on the internet and say, "Look, that's your mother being belittled." Yes. That is unfortunate. I don't wish that on anyone. You know, the kid gonna have to grow up knowing that this is on the internet. This happened to her mom. Her mom, you know, came forward. Joe Budden said, did whatever. Yes, that's not a good thing. So yeah, that's not good for any child to have to grow up with and know that everybody knows and you're that person's child. Yeah, I don't like that either. Sexually harassed and called a And I had to explain to her that is not how someone speaks to you. <laughs> and told her, if someone does do that, you have to speak up. Yeah. Did you tell her to speak up three months later? <laughs> See, come on. This is a bunch of crap. I can't say this enough. This is a bunch of crap. And just to let you guys know, I am going to include the video um, that she's referring to. I'm not sure if I have it in its entirety, but I'm going to include what I have. And then you be the judge. When Joe Budden was saying, oh, you know, press the button, B, whatever. She wasn't mortified. She was, I'm telling you, she was laughing and chuckling or whatever else you want to call it. She was doing all of that with everybody else, with the two co-hosts, Joe Budden. Everybody was laughing, including her. And, you know, like I said, if you had a problem with it, when they said cut, we're done filming. Joe, can I talk to you for a minute? Simple. She was scared of the backlash. She was scared, oh, you know, if I, don't, if, if I say something that ain't nobody gonna like, oh, I'm gonna get in trouble, they don't come for me. Forget all of that. It's sexual harassment. You should have said something. But I didn't myself speak up until this point. Why? So, I was being a hypocrite. Oh. How can I tell my child when someone sexually harasses you, you have to tell someone you have to speak up and I'm not doing the same thing. So that is literally why I'm here today to speak up for myself, start right. my healing process, mm -hmm. like I said, mm -hmm. and continue on with using my voice. There was attempts to intimidate attempts to silence me elaborate i can't be silenced elaborate on that I, I absolutely cannot um oh yeah now after listening to the recording again um joe wasn't joe, joe wasn't there i listened to the recording with the, uh, some of the production staff members um once again everyone you know chuckles so i'm like well i mean if everybody's chuckling just keep that in there oh it wasn't until uh one of my castmates, Mandy, That's tells dumb. me that although the audio sounds funny, I looked uncomfortable. She looked over me and she saw that I was uncomfortable. Um, you weren't that so uncomfortable. She suggested that uh, we shouldn't keep those moments in the episode. And You could have said that. Because I was uncomfortable. Um, so they were edited out. I just wanted to speak my piece. Um, Three months later. It was really, really hard to even get up to this point. Uh, sorry if I had to speak slow. <laughs> sorry if I had to like stutter. And it, I just really had to take the time to really formulate what I was going to say and how I was going to say it because there are so many thoughts that go through my head about this whole scenario, mm -hmm. about the situation. Mm -hmm. that it, 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 it's, it's been hard to even get it out. 
in front of this camera right now. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what else? At this point in time, I just recommend any woman that thinks about working with this person in any capacity, please think again. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and there it is <laughs> and there we go there we go like I said it's pretty quinky dink that you come for him now now you know he's going through the whole thing with Maul and Rory because, you know, he fired them off of his podcast. So now there it is. Not saying that she's wrong. Not saying she's wrong for saying, oh, you know, if you plan on coming to work for Joe Budden, you know, whatever. Okay, I guess. But you're going to come for him now? Three months later, mind you, I can't stress that enough. Three months later, you're going to come for him now. And honestly, I don't know if she's, you know, seeking any type of money or anything like that. But if she is. Mm. Walked into the situation, uh, doing a, li a little bit, a bit more research on how work environments are with him. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Um, I should have take heed to the accusations that have been in the past, even oh. though they are more so in his personal life. Mm -hmm. Those should have been red flags for me as well. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, well, that's his personal life. Regardless of all of that, no one should ever feel comfortable enough to speak the way that person spoke to me. Right. But I, I agree with her. I definitely agree because he was acting like he knew her like that. However, you gave him a pass. You gave him a pass to think that it was okay. Did she or did she not? In my opinion, she did. Ever. No one should ever feel comfortable enough to make a workplace environment completely hostile and toxic yeah but you did. That person did but that's what you no did no one should ever feel like they can be sexually explicit and suggestive not only to you while you're coming in just trying to work but also in front of the entire production staff to belittle you. But you didn't set it straight from the beginning. You didn't set the record straight. You didn't set the boundaries. After I left, well, I, once I decided to quit, I informed my lawyer. My lawyer got on a phone call with his lawyer and informed his lawyer that these are the reasons why my client is leaving. And when was this? Network. When did you quit? Returning. <laughs> Um, once my lawyer, uh, informed his lawyer, I then informed my castmates via text, explaining to them that I am not built for the Joe Budden network. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but did you tell them why? Apologies to them, but I've prayed on it. I've meditated on it, but if this is just not the right fit for me. Took you three months to pray and um, meditate about this? <laughs> Bull! No one responded in that moment, and I was removed from the group chat. But I did speak to hmm. both of them a week after. Uh, okay, here's the, here's the thing about that. So she's saying that nobody responded, you know, in that moment as far as her sending that information in the group chat with her other two co hosts. Now, my thing is, because I looked at the footage, the video, you know, about all of this. My thing is, who's to say that they have not had something with Joe, that they did not sleep with Joe? That's what I was thinking when I was looking at the video footage. It's like, and then she says, oh, 
Well, you know, nobody responded in that moment. I wonder why. I wonder why that is. If they haven't slept with him, I wonder why. Maybe they got information of, you know, as far as the real reason why she left the show. Who knows? Also, uh, after my departure, Joe then went on his podcast and, uh, made this statement. Nothing is scary. Looking like a daddy. <laughs> HR, Joe. HR. <laughs> I need to be like Ross. <laughs> Simple. The Ross, we ever hire any women? No. I'm on one. I'm on one. I'm on one. Any women, I'm going to want to. Yeah, that ain't good. That's not good. After my departure mm -hmm. from the podcast, that's not good. I'm saying this situation one time and one time only. I have to just do this to start my healing process because if I sit and let this fester. For three if more I months. Any longer, I will not be good. <laughs> um, you did it for three months. What I changed? At this point, I, I pretty much said my piece. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take a social media break after this because. I'm Please. You didn't say nothing from the very beginning because you were scared for people to come for you to get backlash from Joe, from the girls on the show, from whoever else. That's what the issue and the problem was. That's the reason why you didn't come forward from the very beginning and say anything. I call BS. I call foul. I call it's a bunch of bull crap. She is full of crap. Now, this is my opinion. It might take my commentary. This is how I feel. This is how I'm viewing what I am seeing what she is seeing. All of the information that I have gotten from this video from her own mouth. It's a bunch of bull. And you know, all of the supposed timestamps, all of, oh, you know, I'm so mortified. I was uncomfortable. Uh, I was, it, I'm telling you, in my opinion, you, it didn't concern you that much. You weren't that mortified and you weren't that uncomfortable because you had the opportunity to, to pull Joe aside right after the recording of when he was on there. You had that opportunity. Did you take it? You also had another opportunity to have them edit all of that out if you weren't you know if you weren't feeling comfortable enough with keeping it on the the show oh i felt pressured oh everybody was chuckling and laughing so oh yeah keep it in eh. it's a bunch of bull crap so yeah you know what <laughs> i'm done with this i am done with this that's my take on it she's full of crap she should have said something a long time ago what happened to saying stuff right away, especially about sexual harassment, especially for that? And you're talking about, oh, I thought I had to talk to my daughter that I gave birth to. Well, what? Extra. All right. That's it. I'm done with this. You guys comment below as to what you think about this whole sordid mess about this one like comment share and subscribe don't forget to hit the bell notification i'll say again in no way shape or form am i you know uh saying that i feel that it's okay for what joe budden has done with this young lady and other young ladies that he has said you know, stuff too that he should not have said. 
things that he may have done to young ladies that he should not have done. And for young ladies that have never come forward, that's not a good thing. If something happens, you don't wait three, four, 10, 15 months later, come right away, right away. It don't matter. Pressure, forget pressure. Long as you come forward, you're doing the right thing right away. Don't let it fester. Don't let it become a disease that will eat you up. You know what I mean? So as far as this young lady goes, I hope and wish that she does get closure, wish the best for her and that she can move on and heal from this and, you know, do whatever she needs to do to be okay. Hopefully maybe get some professional uh, mental health for her mental so you know she can be able to move on. Okay motivators, now it's time for Miss Mo's reaction to your comments. Thank you so much for all your love and support. Now it's time to have some fun with your comments. I usually read a few comments and then I, you know, give my little two cents about the comment or whatever. But before I start, let me just say thank you so much to everyone who made it to the end of this video. I know it was kind of long and I apologize for that. Nevertheless, let's get into it. Now, these comments that I am getting ready to read to you are from my 1000 subscriber show. The first comment is from I Be More War. He or she writes, you stayed on point, so you were rewarded. Congratulations. Thank you so much, I Be More War. <laughs> or I Be More War, I don't even know how the right way to say this. But thank you so much. I, you know, try to do my best. I try to work hard and I'm trying to stay and be consistent, you know, cause what the, cause they say, whatever you put in, that's what you're gonna get out. Right? Right. Next comment is from hdm.iot. He or she writes, keep it 100%. I beg of you, ma'am, real men and women and women out here watching. Jokes, pokes, sing, dance, whatever, but keep the serious message 100%. Our black community needs this and you don't need to keep it all black if I have anything to say about your material. <laughs> Thank you so much for your comment. Um, I will do my best to do that. Um, I was speaking specifically in regards to black men and black women, certain issues that our community has. However, you know, um, I usually try to keep, you know, things uh, neutral as far as all men and all women, but it, it all depends on, you know, what's going on, what the topic is, what the issue is, but I will do my best. Thank you so much for your comment, hdm.iot. Next and last, comment is from Adwa Afum. I hope that I'm saying that right. Adwa Afum. And it simply says, congratulations. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate all of the love and support. Thank you, Adwa Afum. Now I will return you back to the show. Shout out to my motivators once again. Thank you so much for all of the love and support. I will see you in my next video. And like I always say, let's talk.